In this video, we'll be looking at cancer genetics. So let's look at some types of mutations that can actually cause cancer in cells. Recall that the cell cycle has several phases. It has the mitotic phase as well as interphase. During interphase, we have several different stages. We have G1, we have S, and we have G2. We have a checkpoint between G1 and S, as well as a checkpoint between G2 and mitosis, as well as a spindle assembly checkpoint. All these checkpoints are dependent on proteins called cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases, or CDKs. The primary cyclin that we look at in this class is called cyclin B. Early in the cell cycle, CDKs are phosphorylated, and in G2, they'll form a complex with cyclin B. This is called an inactive MPF, or mitosis promoting factor. Right before mitosis, the MPF is dephosphorylated, and that is gonna activate the processes that happen in mitosis. And before the spindle assembly checkpoint, the cyclin Bs are again released and degraded. So if any of these proteins that are regulating the cell cycle are mutated, or if any of them are overexpressed or underexpressed, this can cause changes that can lead to cancer. Another important protein for cell cycle arrest is P53. P53 acts as a transcription factor, it can induce apoptosis, and it can also just regulate the cell cycle in general. When there's mutations in P53, it acts as a tumor suppressing mutation, and thus it means that we are losing the ability to regulate the cell cycle. And remember, with the tumor suppressing gene, we have to have two mutations for it to become a cancer causing mutation. Another important consideration in cancer genetics is looking at how increases or decreases in cell signaling can affect different pathways that are gonna cause cancer. A good example of this is the MAP kinase pathway with receptor tyrosine kinase signaling. A ligand will bind and two monomeric receptors will dimerize. And this dimerized receptor with a ligand bound will auto cross phosphorylate at tyrosine residues. This will then bind to a protein called GRAB2 which will in turn activate a protein called SOS, where GRAB2 is shown in green and SOS is shown in orange. SOS activates a protein called RAS. RAS is a GTPase, but it is not a kinase. RAS will activate a protein called RAF, which is a kinase, which will activate MEC, phosphorylating it, which will then activate MAP kinase once more by phosphorylating it. This phosphorylation cascade will conclude in the nucleus of the cell when MAP kinase will phosphorylate certain transcription factors such as FOS, June, or Mike. As long as RAS is active, we're going to continue on this pathway and we're going to keep on transcribing genes that are going to produce proteins that are going to favor cell growth and division. As long as this protein is active, these cells are going to divide. And thus, a lot of cancers are due to a mutation in RAS. However, this pathway is also going to be inhibited by a protein called RAS gap or RAS GTPase activating protein. When RAS is bound to GTP, it's active. However, this GTPase function means that it's gonna hydrolyze GTP to GDP. So if we do that, then that means that RAS is gonna be deactivated. If a cell has a mutation that allows it to bind GTP better, or that's gonna prevent RAS gap from binding, it can actually increase cell growth and division by keeping this pathway active for longer than it should be by natural cellular controls. So if we have an increase in signaling in these pathways, they're gonna be increasing cell proliferation. So for example, if we have more phosgene and mite produced, we're gonna be increasing the cell division and we're gonna be creating potential for tumor growth. And just likewise, if we're decreasing our regulatory signaling, so if we're decreasing, for example, P53 signaling, we're gonna have less apoptosis, we're gonna have less control cell cycle arrest, and thus we're gonna have less control on a group of cells' ability to grow and spread into a tumor. When it comes to looking for mutations that are gonna specifically cause malignancy, we wanna look at what specific attributes of a tumor will help it to spread throughout the body. Probably the most key thing that a cell has to have to survive is to have nutrients and gas exchange. So thus, if a tumor has the ability to promote vascularization, it can recruit blood vessels towards itself and actually into the tumor in order to increase proliferation of cells within that tumor. Thus, that tumor also has the ability to spread throughout the body because it can more successfully invade foreign tissues because it can again create its own blood supply at other places. When cancer cells pick up advantageous mutations that allow them to better survive and reproduce, we call that clonal selection. Mutations such as those are gonna increase local vascularization, those that give telomerase to a cell, or others that are gonna increase the ability of that cell to proliferate are all ultimately gonna be factors that can increase the malignancy of a cell. And that it again, 
can potentially give it the ability to spread to other parts of the body from its native origin. Two other types of factors that can lead to cancer within cells are defective DNA repair machinery as well as epigenetic changes. BRCA1 and BRCA2 stand for breast cancer gene 1 and breast cancer gene 2. Both these genes are tumor suppressing genes. Although the products of these genes have multiple roles within the cells, BRCA1 and BRCA2 proteins are most notably known for their roles in DNA repair. When there's mutations in BRCA1 or BRCA2, a cell loses its ability to repair its DNA. And if a cell cannot adequately repair its DNA, if it doesn't immediately cause cell death, it can cause certain cancers, particularly breast cancer. And then there's epigenetics. Remember that miRNA is often used to regulate transcription in your cells. And it's no coincidence that in people with cancer, they generally have lower levels of miRNA, which would be regulating these hot genes or these tumor-causing oncogenes. Another thing is methylation. If a person doesn't have either mutant allele at a given locus for a tumor-suppressing gene, but it just happens that the promoters of both of those loci are methylated, they won't have the ability to regulate the cell cycle or to regulate proliferation, which can cause cancer. Another important cause of cancer is viruses. However, that will be discussed in a later video. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.